Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A Colorado first grade boy must be allowed to use the girls' bathroom. A Christian student is punished for his free speech against homosexuality. An eighth grade Christian student is silenced for quoting the Bible during her graduation speech. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and this is the PIJN News Program. We like to do three things on this show. We like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready for our first news story? The New York Times reports a Colorado school district discriminated against a transgender first grader when it refused to let the boy use the girl's bathroom, the state's civil rights division has determined. This decision will have an indelible impact on how such cases are handled in the future, say homosexual and transgender advocate groups. In a sharply worded ruling, the state civil rights division concluded that the Fountain Fort Carson School District in Colorado Springs needlessly created a situation in which the student, a boy named Coy Mathis, was subject to harassment because he was barred from the girl's bathroom, which he wanted to go into, even though he's a boy pretending to be a girl. Here's a quote from the administrator. <clears throat> telling Coy that she, notice he calls the boy a she, must disregard her identity while performing one of the most essential human functions, constitutes severe and pervasive treatment and creates an environment that is objectively and subjectively hostile, intimidating, or offensive. This is from Stephen Chavez, who is the administrator over the Colorado Civil Rights Division. Coy was born, born biologically a boy, and yet he began identifying as a girl just a few years ago. Uh, he began growing his wispy hair long, he began wearing dresses, and his parents claimed that he wanted to be referred to as female. Although there's some suspicion that the parents may have been encouraging that. During kindergarten, Coy's parents treated excuse me, demanded teachers identify the boy as a girl and treat the boy as a girl. So now they wanna confuse everybody else around them. Initially, the school, just a few miles south of Colorado Springs, agreed to the family's demands, but a few months into the first grade, the district barred the boy from using the girl's bathroom, telling his parents that as he grew older and developed, some other students and other parents would likely become uncomfortable if the boy didn't want to use the boy's bathroom, he could use a gender neutral bathroom or the staff bathroom, this district officials decided. The parents, transgender activists, were furious. The Mathises pulled the boy out of school and lodged a complaint with the state's civil rights division in February, claiming the district had violated Colorado's 2008 bathroom bill, which anti-discrimination statute has provisions for transgendered people to use bathrooms of the opposite sex. It was clear the state said that Coy had completely integrated into society as a girl. The boy was wearing girl's clothes, standing in the girl's line at school and choosing to play with other girls. But the state's ruling went even further, saying that evolving research on transgender development showed that a compartmentalizing of a child as a boy or girl solely based on their anatomy is a too simplistic approach to a difficult and complex issue. Chavez also decided that depriving Coy of the acceptance that students need to succeed in school creates a barrier where none should exist and entirely disregards the changing party's gender identity. Well, gee, I wonder who really created a barrier between boys and girls. Maybe it was God who created them male and female. Depriving Coy of the acceptance that students need to succeed in school, Mr. Chavez wrote, creates a barrier 
and that's harmful to the child. Well, that's the news as reported by the New York Times. And let me caveat that by saying, the New York Times, every pronoun, they referred to the boy as a girl. He, her, she, you know, I edited that because I wanted the story to make sense to you. When you read it in the, in the major media, whether it's uh, AP or uh, the liberal mass media, when they read this story to you, they won't tell you it's a boy. They'll, t they'll refer to Koi as a she and her, and they're trying to be politically correct here and trying to be sensitive to the needs of the family. But the truth is, it's a boy. It's genetically a boy, he has boy parts, and he wants to use the girl's bathroom and they're trying to force this insanity on the rest of society. And by the way, on the boy himself. I'm gonna show you a picture of the parents here, uh, Jeremy and Catherine Mathis, who are, in my opinion, child abusers. And it's just that simple. If they cannot teach their little boy to behave and dress like a boy, they're child abusers. And they're warping the kid's mind. They clearly have a political agenda. They got him on the Katie Couric show. They got him on uh, the Jesse Raphael show or all these liberal talk shows promoting this perverted idea. And as soon as they got this ruling by an administrator, they were on all the major talk shows showing off their boy. Why would you do that to a five or six year old kid? I think that boy ought to be removed from his home and removed from these two child abusers. And why do I say that? I think they are filled with a demonic spirit. Maybe not the boy, maybe the boy is genuinely confused. He's just doing what his parents told them to do, but obviously not what the Bible says or what God says. Jesus said in Matthew 19, verse four, have you not read that God who created them from the beginning made them male or female? God is the creator who made that little boy with boy parts. And it says in Deuteronomy 22, a woman shall not wear a man's clothing, nor shall a man put on a woman's clothing, forever does these things as an abomination to the Lord your God. Let's put a dose of truth in these people's minds. Luke 17, Jesus said this about child abusers, and we pronounce this anathema upon the parents. Mr. and Mrs. Mathis, it'd be better for you if you had a millstone hung around your neck and you were thrown into the depths of the sea than for you to abuse this little boy and cause him to stumble. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray deliverance and rescue for Coy Mathis. God, deliver him out of that home, away from those abusive parents. God, forgive their sins, but rescue the boy. Don't let this innocent child be perverted by parents who try to confuse him about his sexuality. God, let every little boy grow up to be the man that you called them to be. Let every little girl grow up to be the woman that you called her to be. And let there be no confusion. We pray against that demon of confusion. You will not confuse American society. We call you out and we rebuke you in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Christian student is punished in school for talking against homosexuality. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because Here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a lady's room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law and they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. 
Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Yahoo News, who reports a Christian student won a lawsuit after being improperly punished for opposing homosexuality. A federal district court judge ruled last week that a Michigan high school teacher violated a student's free speech rights when he kicked the student out of class for voicing personal approval of dis for homosexuality. The ruling was perhaps a hollow victory for the student, Daniel Glowacki, however, because the judge only assessed damages of a single solitary dollar. The incident gave rise to a lawsuit which happened in 2010 on National Anti-Bullying Day at Howell High School in Howell, Michigan. The teacher, Jay McDonnell, got into a heated argument with the student, Daniel Glowacki, in an economics class. Not social studies, but economics, after Glowacki said he objected to homosexuality because the student is Catholic. Judge Patrick Duggan ruled that the First Amendment protects Glowacki's Christian speech. On October 20th, members of the Gay Straight Alliance had asked students and teachers to wear the color purple and celebrate Anti-Bullying Day at Howell High School. Some students wore purple. Some also wore clothing emblazoned with rainbow flags and other symbols in support of the Gay Straight Alliance. McDowell, however, uh, the teacher, also wore purple that day and took time out of the sixth hour economics class not to talk about economics, but instead to talk to students about bullying and show the students an anti-bullying video. The teacher, McDowell, a pro-homosexual teacher, also noticed a student wearing a Confederate flag belt buckle. He asked her to remove it. So this girl's removing a belt buckle by order of the teacher. And that's when Daniel steps in to defend the girl's honor. Daniel testified that he calmly raised his hand and asked the teacher why one student couldn't wear a Confederate flag belt buckle, but the other students could wear purple shirts and display rainbow flags. McDowell said there's a big difference in symbolism between the Confederate flag and the rainbow flag. But the student Catholic Daniel uh, patiently observed that purple shirts discriminate against Catholics and said, I don't accept gays. Well, that set the teacher's hair on fire. Uh, he told Daniel he couldn't say that. Daniel amended his statement. I don't accept gays because I'm Catholic, he said. Well, the pro-homosexual teacher, McDowell, who admitted that he was angry at the time, he analogized saying, I don't accept gays is the same as saying, I don't accept blacks. But it's really not the same thing. The economic teacher then demanded to know if Gan Daniel accepted gays or not. When Daniel refused to recant, he booted him out of class and wrote up a referral for unacceptable behavior. Well, after Daniel left the classroom, then another student piped up. I don't accept gays either. And he asked to leave. And the teacher let him leave. And then the remaining students all wanted to know, why don't we have free speech? According to the court, the high school economics teacher lost control of his classroom and he tried to explain how a student can't voice an opinion that creates an uncomfortable learning environment for any other student. But an investigation by the school district subsequently came down squarely in favor of the student's free speech. The entire incident was expunged from the student's file and he was placed in another economics class with a different teacher at the request of his family. The school district then strongly reprimanded the teacher. The reprimand noted that it was ironic that 
the teacher punished students for having opinions he could not tolerate on, of all days, anti-bullying day. The judge similarly found that the teacher was the bully, having been primarily motivated by his disagreement with Daniel's opinion on homosexuality. So that is the story according to Yahoo News. And thank God, let's discern the spirits for a moment. Let's take a moment. Thank God for this young man, Daniel Glowacki, who is filled with the Holy Spirit of courage to speak the truth, to speak his mind, to express his religious beliefs and express his freedom of speech even in a public school classroom. And we discern the demonic spirit in this tyrant, Jay McDowell, the, the demonic teacher, who is not just pro-homosexual, but he's virulently so. When you persecute people who speak the gospel, who, who quote the Bible or say, this is what my Catholic faith teaches me, you, sir, are an anti-Christian bigot. And that demonic spirit inside of you is not just pushing homosexuality on innocent kids, but punishing those who refuse to comply. That's abuse. That's child abuse, and we're gonna call you out on that. It's funny how hypocritic, uh, hypocritical I think the, the liberals are on these issues. And it just shows that the Bible is true. In Romans chapter two and verse one, the Bible says this. And it's talking to the hypocrites, the liberals like this. It says, you have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. You know, the liberals are more judgmental than the Christians are. For at what point you judge another, you're condemning yourself because you who pass judgment on us you do the same things. We call you out for your hypocrisy. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will liberate Christians to have free speech, that you will rise up in a wave of revival from student to student as you did in that classroom when it erupted in protest to demand freedom of religious expression even in school. God bless the students for practicing their faith and speaking the truth. And God rebuke the hypocrites who want to judge us for that freedom. We pray in Jesus name, amen. Let's take one more short break. When we come back, uh, a student is involved in a free speech lawsuit that may go to the Supreme Court. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a lady's room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. They're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. Let's get right to our last story for today. <clears throat> Christiannews.net reports 
Attorneys representing an eighth grade student who was barred from asking God to bless her classmates during middle school graduation have filed an appeal to the United States Supreme Court. The student who's being identified only as A.M., her initials, since she is a minor, served as co-president of her eighth grade class at Taconic Hills Middle School in New York. As students were preparing to leave middle school and begin high school, A.M. was to deliver a speech to her classmates. In her address, she desired to ask God that God would bless those who are gathered. And she wanted to quote a biblical passage from Numbers chapter six, verses 24 to 26. Here's a quote from her speech. As we say our goodbyes and leave middle school behind, I say to you, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This was the speech that she proposed to read. However, school officials told AM that the section of her speech sounded too religious and asked her to nix it from the address. Both the US court and the second circuit court of appeals ruled against the student, stating that the second district had legitimate pedagogical concerns in seeking not to violate the establishment clause of the US constitution. Maybe the first amendment prohibits free speech. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. On Thursday, the ADF disagreed and they took AM's case to the US Supreme Court, noting that various circuit courts seem to be split about these kind of issues and student speech. They advised that the 11th circuit has held that a student's graduation speech under these circumstances constitutes private speech and that the religious viewed in the speech do not violate the establishment clause, but Unlike the 11th circuit, the other circuits, including the 2nd, 9th, and 10th, have all ruled otherwise, that students don't have free speech. The US Supreme Court is said to only accept a small number of people who appeal to them, and this case may not be picked up by the Supreme Court, but confusion remains across the country. That's the news, thank you to the Alliance Defense Fund, or Alliance Defending Freedom Attorneys, who are representing this young woman pro bono, and again, we discern the Holy Spirit inside of this courageous young woman who's standing up and courageously quoting the Bible in public. Oh my gosh, what a crime, right? But the tyrannical and demonic government officials, including the school officials, including the atheist complainers who would murmur in the audience and maybe file a lawsuit if they heard anyone say the word God, they're filled with a demonic spirit and that demonic spirit of tyranny is trying to silence us. We'll say a short prayer together. Here's a scripture that I wanna pray God's blessing upon you, the viewing audience, even as AM wanted to pray this upon her students. Father in heaven, we pray your blessing on AM and upon her entire middle school class. God, give them your blessing. May the Lord bless them and keep them make his face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. God, lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break, we'll preview tomorrow's show. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? 
Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I wanna encourage you and I wanna invite you to visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and take action today. Don't just sit there and watch the news, but we empower you to make a difference. And the way you make a difference is by taking action with us at PrayInJesusName.org. There's so many petitions that you can sign there and we will instantly fax those to Congress to help defend religious freedom. In fact, that's the tagline of the Pray In Jesus Name project. We send petitions to God, and we send petitions to government to defend religious freedom. Do you care about freedom of speech? Do you care about the right to pray in Jesus' name? I know you do. Do you care about defending your children against the sinful agenda of some parts of society? I know you do. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and if you can, leave a donation. Why? Not for me. Do you know I don't take one dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit ministry? So this really is to help us fulfill the mission. You're not lining anybody's pockets here, but we do need your financial support. In fact, we invite you to pray with us. Maybe you can't give anything and that's okay, but we wanna pray with you. Please subscribe to our free email list and you might even call me sometime toll free at 866-Obey-God. If you have a prayer request, call me at 866-Obey-God. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.